the start. Pool first from Reynor and Snook Fallings off to the left-hand side that Maru does not know about just yet. So he's off hunting the ones on the right, which means the ones on the left are going to get by and be very annoying on that command center. You'd think so. They did turn around for a hot second, maybe guessing, hey, the Reaper, where are you? As soon as they see it, they go back around, and this could kill the Marine that's back at home. They actually have a second Marine on the way, though, and that means if he mm. just micro the first one a little bit, it should be enough to get the second. It is going to be a bit of a deny on time for the command center being finished, but there is the micro we're talking about. Actually, if it pulls the STVs, loses one of the Marines, but uh, yeah, there is the denial on the CC timing. You know what? Also a little bit of a scout from Raynor. All in all, not bad. Yeah, he does get to see that this is double gas. We're not going to be opening with the three command centers super quickly here. I was going to say, Raynor, he missed micro a little bit. He didn't go on the SCV on the natural right away, which he could have done. He could have been there a little sooner, delayed that a little more. No, no, not perfect. Just something to point out here early on in game number one. And you're going to have a little bit of time before the first push as it was a tech-based first for Maru. He is still, a, you know, he's got potential here. Six Hellion still deadly, even though we see eight usually as the dive composition. So rainer has got to take care of that as well as make sure the Banshees don't get a couple of cheeky kills. And then we might go ahead and see that Spire come down at 200 gas. Yeah, let's see exactly what we want to go into. Boom, there it is. It's the Spire, like you suggested, Zombie Grub. No, I mean, definitely a cool way to start off, right? Going into a bit of muters while Reynold has, in my eyes, been very lurker focused in ZVT as of late. The muters get mixed in a good amount, but to me, his, you know, what's kind of commanding about his play is the lurkers usually. So we'll see how the muters work this time. Those Banshees are putting in work. I mean, finding any success with them is always nice because otherwise Reynold seemed like he was going to have a perfect response. So a couple of queens go down, both Banshees live, and they get a little bit of scouting as well. But Raynor, you know, on this map, he faced the Terran. Oh, whoa, uh -oh. whoa, actually, these queens are way far out. They get bopped even farther. Even though they had quite a bit of energy on them, that was just every single Terran unit attacking them. There wasn't much to do there. Yeah, really nice catch from Maru, just punishing Raynor a little bit. He just wasn't realizing where his queens were. And that's two more queens. Now that's four queens killed off, and that starts to become a pretty serious issue as time goes by. So yeah, don't want to lose too many more of those. That will slow down his creep a little bit. Something that Maru is really dedicated to denying is he does lose one Banshee, but he's always scanning for these creep tumors. He wants to keep this creep back. He knows how important it is to have control himself on Jagannatha rather than Raynor just being able to run away with complete and total control. This push of Maru could be deadly. Yeah, this is the scariest push, but, but Raynor's already oh, doing no. such an excellent job. Grabs two tanks, the second one with the Mutas, gets more lings into the natural, and Maru was only halfway across the map, only just out clearing up some creep spreads for Raynor has plenty of time to threaten him with the Banelings and to make more behind this. The Lings still not being cleaned up. I guess a tank is siege up, that's fine. But Maru has had to entirely retreat. SCV's going down to the third base too. Raynor just has control over the game. I mean, I don't, do you understand why he didn't lift the depots here as well? I mean, he had so <laughs> he much <did>. time to <laughs> raise the main depots. And first I thought, oh, he wants them to come in because he can trap them. That's like, no, they're still killing SCVs. They killed another siege tank. Maru really did not respond to this run by full stop. It just, there was just no response in the slightest. Finally, he pulled back home. Now the meters are going to come in, get a couple of extra kills, and this does feel like it's starting to snowball a little bit into Reynolds favor. And other things as well, Maru who starts a plus two armor, but where's that plus two attack upgrade? That's a massive thing to be missed now. And the attack upgrade is way more important than the armor. And to just be getting one, and it's the armor, that's a mistake. And that's something else that could be crucial here for Maru deeper in this game. Yeah, if you're going to forget one upgrade, and hopefully you don't, but if it is one, you want the armor to be forgotten. The attack is much more important. I, I mean, what does that matter if you can't move out? Because <laughs> every time you move out, there's 20, 30 Zerglings or two Bailings running into your middle line. This is a nice catch. Gets a couple of meters as they try and swing on in. But at the same time, Riddle's going to strike at the natural. Lings and Bane's running forward. And at the <laughs> third base, the Bailings are going to clear that mineral line. And the Banes aren't done yet. CG still rolling through at the end. Yeah, a couple of last Marines went down. That was an attack every which way we looked. And Raynor's still not really done. The Mute is looking for some damage. Do get bought by a couple of Widow Mines. But the point is, Raynor did all of this damage, of course, on Maru's side of the map. So even if Maru was like, you know what? You know, I'm really angry at you. Let's go ahead and go across the map. It wouldn't work at all. 100% would not work. So he's just forced to take that damage. Be like, all right, cool. And then just continue to play out the game, which means that Raynor does whatever he wants to do. Burrow's on the way, 2-2 two -two is on the way. Infestation Pit final on the way for that eventual Hive technology. And the only thing Maro can say is like, yeah, at least I interrupted the creep in the mid game. But I mean, that means he is in complete defense mode. And Raynor just says, cool, my time to go Hive. He's going to go into further upgrades. He's even going to fight up here. There's a Widowmind borrowed up. And 
Didn't like that fight, ZG. I thought he was actually better off just backing it up and, you know, taking his time. Raider has room to make a couple of mistakes, so not too worried for him yet. Still a bit worried for Maru. He is handling these mutas very, very well, and Raider is investing into them too. So the fact that they haven't really been the main contributor of damage is, you know, a good note for Maru. He's also done a great job, I think, actually, you know, preparing for the defense on the right more so, because planetaries, they can't lift. If all the Balings come over here on the left side, you can at least lift and save the command center. It's the planetary that we often see when undefended just get popped, and then the, the Terrans just feel like it's game over at that point. Yep, you know, you lose that fourth base, you've not been rich enough to have another one on the way, you've got to rebuild it completely and float it back over. It just takes forever, and in a game like this, it just doesn't feel like that will ever be good enough. But yeah, I mean, good defense from Mara, right? You definitely got to look at that and say, well, Reno kind of played a bit of a, you know, overly aggressive moment or two. Like I said, I thought he was backing it up and saying, I don't need to fight here. And he was like, actually, yeah, let's do it anyway. And there was a little bit of that, you know, even in his interview yesterday, he said, ah, you know, I kind of thought, you know, when I'm playing Dream, maybe I should just try and kill him and it didn't work out, but then I could just go late game anyway because he's so confident later on. He jumps on this army on the left-hand side, ZG, but will once more back it up while taking quite a few losses. The Mutas this time find a vulnerable to air fourth base. The missile turret's not quite done, means that 10 SCVs will go down. Maru forced to respond as quick as possible, will be saving the Planetariat again. But uh, Rainer again, I mean, it's just like, it's, it's all about time buying, it's all about grabbing what he possibly can, and then prepping for the next wave of units if Maru actually decides to go ahead and attack. Now, Maru's attack, when maxed out and on 3-3, three, three, could still be really feisty. The problem is that he has never gotten uh, you know, he can't catch up with upgrades as Terrans. He's just going to calmly wait for that attack to be done. So that already, I feel like, lessens the bite of his army. And, of course, the fact that it just sent, it can't get out on the map yet. Yeah, if he does find that opportunity where he gets, like, a really good defense, a good cleanup, and he gets that momentum to go across the map, that's going to be the most dangerous part of this game then from Raynor. But Raynor's setting up to deal with that. His creep now really is out everywhere. He is getting more and more bases up and running. And he's just going to run into this fourth base again. Let's see how this goes. The Thor goes down in the medevac, and the base keep rolling through. Going for that mineral line, ZG. And this Blantry might have fired its last shot at the same time. Bands on the left-hand side come on through. This Blantry survives. That's a fairly big deal for Maru. I mean, he didn't even lose that many SCVs. Yeah, only seven SCVs went down. Some bio also, I suppose. But um, Maru is holding on in a lot of other situations that Terrans would have faltered in. But he is, again, just just holding on. The Mute is always going to be a serious threat, even as Raynor moves into Ultras and all the Tier 3 upgrades. Raynor, yeah. is, uh, he's got a lot of options here, and it looks like Maro is finally fed up, actually going to move out onto Creep. Lots of Marauders, so if the Bailings moved in here, it wouldn't exactly be efficient. But so far, only the Creep removal, and, and Raynor is not even really eager to take that down. I feel like one thing Reno did really well with the Mutas is he's always been working against the Thors, the Widow Mines. And there was a point here where there were more Mutas on the map than Marines. And that just kind of goes to show when the Thors are being, being killed off as well, you just don't have an answer to the Mutas. And that's what's given them so much dominance in this game as well as right now. It is a case of Maru having to defend against what is the Zerg kind of goal. This was what Reno wanted to end up on. You got a base, but you're going to lose the army while killing it off. All right, once again gone for a double gas. So we're going to see, um, well, I'm going to guess Banshees again, Henley and Banshee again. And he's turned out to go into like this Marauder build, which you can still kind of hide maybe as Stim. Let's see how good Reynolds' rescout is, because he is really, really going to want to make sure he knows what's up here. This Viking wants to deny this Overlord specifically before he sees any Marauders. Marauders going to pop in a moment. Reynolds right there to uh. see it. What a scout. And that means Reynolds knows exactly what's up. A spine could be great right now. Yep, there it goes. Extra queens. Gather those all up in the same place. Reynolds has the info he needs to defend this. Yeah, this actually shouldn't do any damage. Already not a great game for Maru. Reynolds chooses an excellent game to go for Overlord speed and thus ensure a secondary scout because of one suicide overload would not have been enough so Maru I mean you, you still got to do it there's a chance that the Queens are still out of position that the overconfidence is there because you scouted it there is a chance it still does damage as far as helmet attacks go I think this one has the most potential but more so when it's unscouted so let's yeah. uh, see how it goes when it is scouted Maru is going to be pushing across the map with the Hellions the medevac has the Marauders and uh, Rainer is actually just setting up what looks to be maybe just a run-by attempt, and then they can come back later if the Queens are having trouble. 
Yeah, Queen's already kind of backing it up. Here go the Lings into that natural expansion. Deep is already raising a Hellion behind him. It kind of keeps the Hellion there, though, rather than reinforcing across the map. Mario sees the spine crawl and says, no, I'm going to check out of this one. I don't want to be on this train into your natural expansion because I'm just not going to get there. He's actually going to go for Hellion drop in the main. I love that because all of the attention of Reno right now is at the front. The great creep spread. That creep tumor is just amazing His to links. find out what's going on. His links were already on the way. Yeah. Like he just, I mean, I, he said, you know, the, they love the Hellion follow up. And that's, that's definitely still true. It also just makes the most sense, of course. But uh, Rainer's got everything on lockdown. He doesn't even really make that many links either. So his queen production has been consistent. He's up to 11 queens. That was good enough to defend it and take up his larva, even though it took up some minerals. So he's just been droning pretty happily, accurately as well. And he's going to be going into roaches. So I guess just looking for a 1-1 roach attack on Oxide can be pretty powerful, especially if your opponent opened up with something that had to do damage. And it's like, pretty much done, none. Yeah, Reynold gets like a free walk into this roach style. And that's going to make this time as powerful as it can be. There's a lot of things that Maru hasn't done here. He's not gone for any Banshees. His tank production's delayed because you're focusing on that armor. Your third CC's not been up, so you don't have the economy. You don't have as many units out. So all of these things do add up a little bit. And I kind of like the decision of Reno. And, and again, on Oxide as well, why not throw something like Roaches out? A map which if the Terran does get let to macro up in, start pushing around, you sometimes do fall into trouble. So I like the map for it. I like the setup for it. Let's see if Reno can make it work. As soon as Mara realizes this, they'll try and get the heck out of dodge. But you know, usually your tanks are left behind because they have to unsiege or tank singular in this game. Uh, this is—it's uh, already you know a bad start for Mara, and I feel like it's gonna get worse. It's—it feels crazy. They just has no idea, right? And now you've got a tank that's difficult to get home. Medivacs have been target fight again. <laughs> Another one just gets out of there, actually. But that could have been bad. You know, I feel like he still hasn't seen the roaches because Reno just took, used them to take down the rocks. Defended this with oh, Queens. God. Roach Ravager is going to show up. Okay, now Maru realizes, whoa. -oh, and he's going to start running the SCVs away. But the Roach Ravager is there. The tank is on siege. I mean, this is just disastrous. Maru is not in <laughs> position in the slightest. And Reno is going to come in like a sledgehammer and pretty much just knock Maru out of this game. Yeah, he's like trying to like get the roaches to chase his army. Like, please yeah. don't hit my natural <laughs> and my production. That would be just so nice. But Rainer actually splits his army as he can do so. He is going to have some trouble breaking into the production. A tank on the high ground, that's where all the bio is going to be yeah. coming from. But it looks like he's already done enough damage. Third base just not mining. 22 SCVs have already been killed. Rainer is going to, I believe, take this game number two almost as easily as game number one. But Maru, he's going to say, yeah, I'm not going to tackle too easily. I'm going to clean this up and try and play out this game. And he actually might be able to. With three CC still alive, if he could clean this up, he can start controlling the map with medevac drops. That's maybe where Maru really feels powerful. So the weakness of Roach Ravager, you don't have very good drop defense. Reynolds is going to go for round two, though. I feel like he knows you need to mine from this third phase. And if I go again you're probably not going to be able to get a good setup on it. He's working down on those rocks to open up a multi-pronged attack in or just a wider attack in. Definitely a bit of possibility. As you do see, our Bioforce just going to be holding back that little bit. And you can see even the Queens are here, ZG, absolutely ready to commit <laughs> into this right now. I mean, Reno's going to go. He's going to make this happen. And, uh, well, I don't I don't know what you really do here as Maru. Get lucky. Reno's just go out, right? No 2-2 start or anything. Maru's trying to play a macro game. He took the wrong bet. Gonna try to hold here. One tank in the back is actually gonna get a ton of shots. Even one of the high ground is getting some shots. But once again, the third CC has to be lifted. More SCVs fall. And again, the bio is on the run, hoping to be chased. And then they can pick up and go back home. Uh, very awkward. Oh, Rainer is back up. There's that 70 supply difference. Rainer is further using his all in as an all in. No 2 2. Oh, he actually does start on drones, just as I speak. And 2 2 on the way. But. Maru actually did pick up his mm. bio units not to go back home, but rather to initiate a counter. And that cool might idea. be a good idea, but yeah. it's already looking like it's going to be cleaned up. I mean, I feel like this is the reason he probably was like, yeah, you know what, let's recover. Because let's just see what this drop can do. Yeah. Because otherwise, this is obviously not looking good for him at all. So I like the idea. I mean, that's the right bet. It's the best thing to do. Against oh. Roach Ravager, the weakness will always be the drop defense, right? And, well... I mean, they're actually doing a lot more than we expected. He just needs a mountain of damage, and he's just nowhere near that, right? Yeah. The medevacs had a little bit more juice in them. The marauders barely didn't die because they weren't focus-fired. So that was a, probably a very effective trade, even though we weren't watching it. But it's still not 
uh, they didn't do more than that. It took down a decent number of roaches, eight drones, and did, uh, I guess, force Raynor off his back. But that was kind of already happening because Raynor was respecting the natural defense. Tanks and Liberators kind of missed the Corrosive Bile on one. So, I mean, now, now Raynor's like, I'll, I'll contain you on two bases. And the longer that goes on, the more he'll recognize, okay, you must be doom dropping me. So there's even a little bit of a scout there. Yeah. Doesn't, uh, doesn't take a genius to realize that's tomorrow's only option. I mean, I, I like what Maru's doing though, right? He's not just saying, right, this is over, I'm done. He's like, well, I've got 2-2. He probably didn't start his 2-2. I can drop around a little bit. And maybe if he takes a bad fight into me, maybe if he gets a bit impatient, he just gets a bit too reckless, maybe that's my opening. This fight should go fairly well. I think he actually has a, a few too many units here. Maru's going to get a bit of a cleanup. There's just so much more to be done. Oh, my goodness. Those transfusions just were like, no, Wardy, not in the slightest. But this drop actually does very well. Kills off a base. There's some Maru hope. I guess he thought that there was going to be an attack in the... Well, yeah, I guess because he was worried that his third... Yeah. The army that was at the fourth would not be in the main. So he did split his army, guys, but he split it incorrectly. Maru gets a hit on the fourth base. The Hive, Hive is actually kind of under threat here as the Roaches do respond as quickly as possible. Soon enough, too, these are going to get a little less effective for Maru as 2-2 two -two will also hey, finish for Raynor. This is actually getting kind of bad for Raynor. Like, if he loses this fight as well, he is going to get a siege tank, which is nice. Maru, please stim your army. Uh, if he'd stim that army and, like, ran into this a little more and he gets a clean up here, he keeps on dropping. I mean, the reality check is that Raynor still has money in the bank upgrades and now evening up. Viper's on the way. Everything is starting to go Raynor's way eventually. He was just kind of still stuck on the not-so-good army, but he teched up at the right time to make sure this wouldn't be a forever issue. Yeah, if he had waited another minute or just thought, like, yeah, I'm winning, yeah. Like, I'm not going to do anything, then yes, he's absolutely in a terrible spot, especially as the Liberators continue to siege up forward. If he didn't have access to Vipers, this would be a real, really big issue. With the Vipers, however, there's a couple of choices, Abduct and Blinding Cloud. Raynor also still playing not just entirely defensive. Sends some roaches across the map. It's going to make Maru make a difficult decision. Takes out a Libra with Pros of Bio, but I don't see any Vipers quite yet. It is just Bio against Roach Ravager Queen. A couple of Pros of Bios will buy some time as Raynor has to remax. But this is the damage that Raynor's finding. All of the roaches over here killing 15 SDVs. Might even break through into the natural. Mean that Maru's all in is even more all in. It's a pretty good army. Bio against Roach Ravager is a heck of a drug. But is it enough to kill Raynor in totality, basically? Because he's got to do it. I mean, he put Raynor down on like no hatcheries, basically. Two hatches rebuilding top left. He's made a really good effort out of this. And it, honestly, if Raynor had not made some of these decisions a little bit, you know, or when he did and he did wait that little while longer, he might genuinely be in some problems right now. And I mean, honestly, Maru was maybe another base type away from having Raynor in trouble just being able to build units. This is amazing. Look at all those roaches he's going to catch. He's found so many efficient fights over just the last couple of, like, minutes. I mean, we really got to give credit to Maru because it's like we've seen in his other matchups. Even when he's behind, he just says, how could I win this game? What do I do to get back into it? And his execution of it is really marvelous. And he, he, he definitely had Reynolds sweating a little bit here, right? Yeah. If a couple of these army trades, the army graph was like, you know, it spiked a little bit more for Maru then I could see him actually snowballing to a victory and Raynard kind of shaking his head and being like, oh, why did I screw up there, right? Yeah. But unfortunately, while the army graph looks like it's been matched, the income graph is totally red. So Raynard's always <laughs> yeah. had that little bit of like, well, I could screw up once or twice, but as long as I don't lose all of my production, I'm fine. And that, that is the case. Raynard's still up 80 supply, even on upgrades. Now has high of technology, so he's about to have an upgrade lead. The Vipers come in from behind. Parasitic Bomb and Blinding Cloud. And there is Raynard's victory. This was a little bit different, right? This was overload speed, then link speed, whereas yeah. last time was link speed, then overload speed. So Rain was just like, I just want to see what you up to. And uh-oh, Maru's identified that. So going straight in because of it, no link speed ready. And it means he can get roasted and toasted on some drones. Six workers down. And Raynor, full on defense mode right now, trying to scramble together whatever he can. Evo Chamber blocked. And that means the Hellies will continue through. Come on, do a bit more, guys. You had an opportunity there, and it feels like now you're cornered in by Queen. Somehow only lost one or two more lings, and not a single additional drone. He also droned through that. Make like a couple of extra lings, but 
That's another thing that we have to pay attention to when those Hellions run by. If they do a maximum amount of drone damage and the Zerg player panics and makes like 20 lings, yeah. then the Zerg player is in absolute trouble. Seems like Rainer did deal with that about as calmly as possible, considering that he was surprised. He was not hey, prepared for he, it. He's in trouble, Maru. He does not have any Hellions left, by the way. So he just has no map control bar this Banshee. If Rainer just like ran lings at him, like, well, that's he could funny. be in some trouble. Yeah, I guess if he had made like 20 lings and he could just yeah. go across the map and do some damage. But yeah. uh, I guess that's what the wall is for. At, at most, it would delay the third CC, which is still something. But now no lings are actually able to do that. Banshee not going to find much success at all. Rainer now, I guess, promising himself not to take any other silly damage. is going into a fairly fast lair, which I'm actually surprised to see on Lightshade. I mean, I've seen it do it before on Jagannatha, especially with such great scouting. I mean, he did get great scouting here, but the, the map is smaller. Feels more uncomfortable for a uh, faster Mew to play, so I wonder if this is just for Overseers, but then where's the Evolution Chamber? The Hellenes died, so Rainer does yep. have a lot of that map control, and I guess he's gonna try and, and push that as well. If he can get the Spire out and then just barely be ready in time for that push that usually happens over here. This is just a drop. Oh, speaking of drops, actually, yeah, Rainer he's... going for the main base. He's got overlord speed. Why not use it? Maru, 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 just not seeing it, not really reacting oh. at all until way too late. 11 workers going down, and, well, once again, just Rainer the one finding the damage here. And I was going to say, the one thing about only four Hellions was that maybe a push comes a little bit sooner and so on, but now it already feels depowered because you've almost got to do damage with the push because you're just losing SCVs again. Reno just feels like he's in a lot of control. He sees this little army. He's going to back it up for the moment, make sure he can defend. This push up the top onto that right side of the third base here is one of the better pushes you usually have. As a Terran, here come the Lings. No counter uh, defense because, well, the Hellions aren't around. There's a few Marines that show up, but even then, the Lings maybe could have stuck mm -hmm. around. Instead, they want to go back home, clean up this attack, Zombie Grub. This is really scary. I'm actually, like, Rainer feels like he's changed his mind a couple of times, or then changed his mind once, and then was forced to react to this. So he's banking a lot of minerals and gas, hope, but wanting to use them for mutas, but then not having the larva, because he had to make a lot of Lings. And despite having some decent creeps, but he actually has no, you know, immediate preparation to stall that push. And then Maru's like, okay, you don't have anything ready to go. I'm just gonna pounce them like that. And that works out yep. wonderfully for Maru. Rainer now gets into his mutas, but um, pacing wise, very different game. A couple bailings finding Marines. That is always nice. And of course, Rainer further future attacks run by is always a threat and even back into the main base with some wings. He's gonna deny the bottom left, which is gonna leave Rainer on the three bases in the top kind of back where we started. Reno's Rex button to the one that just died moments ago as well, but of course, Aaron might just be able to move up and kill that. Of course, Reno likely to launch a counterattack to make that not happen, or to at least try and come and sweep in and to clean that army up. Gonna kill this Banshee off, that's one less thing to worry about. He wants to jump on this arm while these tanks are on siege. Now would be the time. Tank siege up and ZG. Here we go. Bane's running in. That's a lot of damage, actually. Maru's um, sticking around a long time on his opponent's side of the map with the same original move out. So, of course, eventually, your opponent's going to get that defense advantage, get a lot more units, and actually find a decent fight. Maru does respond about as quick as possible, realizes what he can get away with, and that was the Marines. Let's the tanks die, unfortunately. But Maru's still with almost a 30 supply lead. 20, I guess, now, but still with a decent army pushing through. 2-2, two, 75% two, done. Rainer not able to afford that. Is trying to make a lot more lings, a lot more banelings, and get to Burrow, which will only be effective if his creep is cleared up, which yeah. it will be after this. So once, if he can clear this up, then we can talk about the burrowed banelings. But right now, it is about the mutas doing their job. They're finally up to a decent number. 11 mutas is... Not even quite decent, I would say. Like, yeah. I guess I, it's it's enough to threaten a medevac or an SUV line. It's better than what he's had before, at least, right? Before he was doing so much with just four. It kind of makes you think 11's almost unstoppable, but obviously that's not quite how it works. There's 2-2 two, two to 1-1. One, one. The upgrade difference here is huge. Once more, Reyna was just having to give up a base. He cannot keep that defended at all. Nice little counter, but just hitting army units. I mean, these are just small, efficient trades. What Reyna really needs is one big, efficient trade. He's not getting it. Maru has got this game on lockdown. He continues pushing every which way. You might lose a couple of expensive factory units. Well, hold on here, actually. Ooh. That was not a good pickup. I was going to say, at least he's leading with his Marines and his Medivacs. Uh, that was a little... That was not as great. Mutas tackling more than they can chew. Those are 2-2 two, yep. two Marines and only 11 Mutas with no upgrades. Uh, that was never going to look very pretty. Rainer is starting to really lose control of this game. He needs to interrupt the tempo of Maru and then... I guess creep spreading or get the burrowed banelings now that the creep is gone but I just don't think he's going to get a chance 
Uh, Mario's still scanning ahead for the most part as well. Maybe not everywhere, but seems pretty well prepared for anything that could maybe upset him right here as on top of another base well so is Raynor back on the other side of the map that counterattack coming through but it's SCVs for drones Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. a fusion core ooh, ooh. ooh it's better cruisers you know that's a pretty fun way to set up on this map as well but the one thing I do worry about is a little bit of that kind of like if you say go roaches against this and you hit like roach ravager I don't know how if he's gonna play Mac or bio right but like any sort of like roach push hits really well against this i feel I, I always worry a little bit about that as we do take extra gases on the natural yeah and that's like oh no i'm forced into ling bay muta so you kind of have a bit of a choice as hellions are gonna make a big play on the right side links come through i mean obviously the one issue for reno is he just doesn't know what the follow-up is going to be and that there's going to be almost an endless amount of hellions coming his way so he's not full of Troran at all and it must be time for that bc to stop flying in somewhere but he actually has two sport followers in the main oh yeah he teleports right on <laughs> That, that's kind of not great. Look how much damage that BC takes. Wow, that is... Wow, that's actually uh, pretty sick. How did he actually... Did, he doesn't have any Spore Crawlers in the natural. And that's fine, because like if it's a Banshee build, you don't have to worry about your natural in this yeah. map a lot of the time. But you still, like, to have two Spores in the main is almost always because you know it's going to be a battle cruiser. I'm not sure how he knew. But also, even before the two Spore Crawlers are noticed, I was surprised by how Maru did that. It's almost always battle cruiser to distract, then Hellions. Not Hellions, then the BC. Yeah, but the way that it worked out was that there wasn't even a necessary... that The Queens weren't even necessary to really help with the, because, the yeah. uh, Hellions. The Lings were there. So that, I thought, was going to do a lot more as a surprise. But to be fair, it's not a surprise-based build. The game goes on. It just kind of feel like there was a lot more potential there. Is Arena going to be surprised when he realizes that this is mech boat? Because I feel like right now, Spy is on the way. That's actually good to make Eruptors, but he started Bane Speed, and he still hasn't said, I'm going to go for a Road Roar, which maybe he wants to try and play Ling Bane Muta, but while some players have gone Ling Bane Muta versus mech, that's more typically a, oh no, I didn't realize what was going on, and now I have to play this versus mech, rather than a, oh yeah, I love playing Ling Bane Muta versus mech situation. I could marry, I really don't believe in Ling Bay Muda. I used to be like a real hype man about Ling Bay Muda. I'm like, guys, this was a style for a while. And nowadays I'm a bit more like, yeah, but Terrence figured out how to play first Ling Bay Muda with Mac and yeah, I, I don't really like this at all for Reynold. Let's see what ends up happening is the couple of queens do go down on some initial Yamatos. Teleports are available on these BCs to get on out of here. So there's two things that Rainer would have seen. One was so many more Hellions would have been an indicator of Mac. Yeah. And then also the two battle cruisers is, is like almost a guarantee of mech, especially with the Yamato that was also shown. So I'm not sure exactly when he would have figured this out, but he sh definitely knows about it now as the Nidas went into the main base. So he, as, as you said, this might have just been like, well, I'm already on my path to Ling Bane Ling Nido. Let's just try and make this work, which Raynor has done in the past. A couple of those qualifiers for past IEMs, I thought he was actually quite good at handling the mech style that was at one point the most popular way to play. So, um, yeah, as you said, let's see how Rainer actually plays this one out. It's definitely not going to be the standard Blackburn game where there's no. that nice pressure kind of in the mid game through the middle of the map and continued pressure. It's going to be a longer wait for Maru's push. I was going to ask what you think about just Blackburn as a map for Ling Bane versus Mech as well, because to me it almost feels like this is the map as the Terran you'd want to play first Ling Bane Meter on. Maybe that gold's a bit exposed, but otherwise. Where are the Lingings and Banes going to find any sort of reasonable engagements from? It might be. I feel like he's also just like totally on the back foot. He's just been yeah. like, really? 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 Yeah. The entire game. Uh, and nothing is going very well. Maru is maxed out, about to finish 2 2, has four healthy battle cruisers. His, I feel like the first push might actually just win the game. Maybe not because it is Rainer, but uh, now the battle cruisers teleport away. Gonna take I mean, an efficient trade because they survive. I mean, this is just amazing. How many mutas he ended up killing? He got three Yamadas off. He killed three or more, four more mutas on top of that as well. I mean, there you go. He just killed 12 mutalisks. So, yeah, that's pretty good. As push on the bottom side, some veins are gonna wrap around and they actually do okay against the Cyclones. But the Thors will just not care. The good news is now the Lynx show up and they can kind of <laughs> get a bit of a surround. This is like. One of the weirdest fights we might have ever seen in StarCraft 2 is the Thor's kind of fight legs. I mean, I don't know, ZG. I mean, that's just indescribable. <laughs> One Thor took all of the non-queen damage. Way to go, buddy. Way to go. Uh, but of course, that's not all of Raynor's army. He's also still maxed out. It just, it just it looked like it was because he didn't do anything else besides send those lings and queens. So that gets cleaned up pretty easily from Maru. And then Maru is going to do that push. I was going to say, not really much stopping him. 
as the battle cruisers now again at full health can help take care of the mutas if they really were a threat. So how does Rainer actually handle this push? Just mass Baneling trying to nest you this game. But even even the split on the force yeah. from Maru. He's saying mass bailing, but that was all of his bailing. That was all of them. He, wow. he has 28 lings and like a bunch of mutas to try and make something happen right now. I am seeing it as these mutas try and take down the Thors. It's an expensive, expensive fight. There's a ton of lings building, but lings do not kill battle cruisers, so I have no idea what the expectation he is here for Raider. Like he's still <laughs> maxed out, but it feels like he may as well be on a hundred supply. Yeah, I, I mean, he's got 100 drones, so it's yeah. you know, obviously not going to it's gonna be the biggest army. But, but even with that, I would expect a bigger army. So much of his minerals and gas go into more mutas, hoping, I guess, to catch Maru not building enough anti-air. Because, I mean, that can be a trick to mech, but it's just, it's not... Maru is only building Thors. He doesn't seem deterred by the masslings oh, trying to flood. Oh, yeah, I mean, here he goes. The mutas fly on in, the Yamatos go off once again. And, I mean, these BCs are just going to trade fantastically. One in the end teleports as the mid just turn around. Ling Bane continues through on the ground. The thing is, again, none of these fights are ever going to be efficient. 23,000 resources lost to 9,000 zombie grub. I mean, that is a disgusting resources lost tab. And uh, 100 drones on not really enough bases because they've not been left to mine comfortably. Definitely ain't going to make oh up for God. that at all. And Maru the is just resources. going to keep on going through. Did you see the resources lost? Yeah, I just, I just said, like, it's a 15k difference. It's oh, disgusting. Oh, you did say 15k, sorry. Yeah, yeah that is, um... Dang. Dang, that is that yeah. is pretty big. That is. I mean, it's exactly how I expected it to go, to be fair. I've just been, like, watching the last minute and being like, well, this is this is how I thought it was going to go. Yep. The only thing that would have changed this up is that if Rainer had, at some point in the earlier portions of the game, had more momentum. If he was actually trying to... If he denied a third for a little while and then denied a fourth for a long time, then the cell can really work. But there is pretty much nothing to stop Mario from getting up to four, all four bases with double upgrades and maxed out. And then Rainer was still on a composition that entirely depended on having more supply and more mobility against a guy that was perfectly comfortable. Now he did five battle cruisers. I, I, I just watch the resource trades continue to go farther and farther in, in Maru's advantage. It's kind of crazy. How important were those first two Marines of Maru denying that overload scout? Because yeah. Randall built a spine, right? He was playing defensive and those little things and then maybe not quite knowing about the BC. And then even the first BC actually got shut down well. It was the fact he just had... I, I really don't think he knew it was mad. Yeah, it, it took him a long time to realize it. And then by that time, Maru... Had already got his third base up and running and, and was even already on the fourth in the blink of an eye. <laughs> Rainer is still going to try and play this one out. He does have still a bit of a bank, but Maru, even with a bigger bank, now has three, three done. So these battle cruisers now have plus three armor, same with the Thors. So Lings with two, two aren't going to do very much. I don't really think Rainer has an end game plan. I think he is just hoping that Maru doesn't make enough Thors or doesn't. I, I don't even, I can't even talk about the Lings, honestly. I don't even think the Lings could do anything if there were any Hellbats, which there really haven't been. And yeah. Morrow's not faced. He's not going to stop making Thors because they've done the trick so far. And that is a tied series. It is once again no Tech Lab. Ah, okay, it's going to be Tech Lab and a Fusion Core. I actually came down uh -huh. for the Tech Lab. And a Fusion Core again. So, I mean, I would be really surprised if he did the three Battle Cruiser mech once again. Mm -hmm. Just because I think there's a much stronger chance that Raynor is going to scout something, or even if he has such a late scouting in, to actually adapt quicker in his mind. And on a different map, too. And already we can see a little bit more scouting done, but there's the fake Ooh. cloak. Yeah. So the fusion core remains unscouted, and that, that certainly is still an issue, but if it's going to be mech again, I feel like Raynor should be able to kind of readjust his brain a bit quicker. Uh, but that, that is actually a question here. Is Maro just figured out a weakness that Rainer hasn't had to deal with in, in so long? He's going to do when he finds out that this is a battle cruiser, right? When he knows it's a BC, how quickly does he confirm it's mech? And how quickly does he move into Ooh. everything else? As these queens are a little bit separated because he wasn't expecting this, I suppose. Now the Hellions are going to go for those drones. One queen already dead. One queen's fighting the Hellions. The other queens are fighting a BC. There's a little bit of a mess as the Lings are going to get roasted as well. That's nine drones, multiple queen kills, and I mean, the Hellions are still alive. So this, I said like rainer has got to change up, not his defense because it was fine last game, but rather his, his follow up. In this case, Maru changed his attack. Yeah. He realized that that was an undefended third base or under defended third base. And if his battle cruiser came along, then it would do a lot more damage. And he was right about that, getting a lot of queens killed. 
decent number of drones and lings and not losing his battle cruiser most importantly in fact only losing two hellions and then original reaper full on switch up here from Raynor. road trauma starts corrupt is on the way yes i mean he is down a lot of supply but the best thing about playing first mech is if you fall a bit behind mech doesn't typically come across the map and kill you right away so you do get more of a chance to kind of play against it and to prepare to kind of get back in the game than you would if a you know, bunch of stimmed marines were about to show up. Yes, there's not a 60 marine drop into a second drop into a tank push. It, it can be some Hellion Cyclone harassment and pushback of creep, but it's not going to be the lethal strike from oh, a bio no. glare. Okay, well, some drones just chilling there, so six of them go down. Hellions are like, okay, that's cool. Yeah, I think they were actually transferring, and then you realize the Hellions were there, uh, yeah, clicked yeah. them away, and then they just sat AFK, so... They were kind of chill. I mean, they shouldn't have been chilling still, but they, <laughs> at least there was oh some explanation gosh. behind the chill. I mean, 31 drones go down, 16 Hellions as well, sure, but it's it's obviously the uh, the the Hellions aren't super important as far as getting his third base up. It's already up. His yeah. fourth base also going to get up. So obviously the drone losses are a lot worse. Uh, totally right about the pacing of Mech, but then as far as the pacing of what Raynor would like to do here cut as he is by the knees like he can't do the big really scary all-in attack at least to the same uh you know intensity that it, it might be if he had not lost all those drones so i mean he wants to try and do a big attack before maru's ready could it work i, I suppose i think it will i don't know no I'm, I'm actually not really a big believer in it yeah i mean who was on the way a cyclone count we've seen being good I, I don't think you can make something aggressive work here. I don't mind on this map, just the way that the game has gone. You're just so heavily weakened. Yeah, I, I'm kind of with you there, ZG. I don't actually know what you do. I mean, I guess you start running around the map as Reno. You start trying to make those picks. You start trying to trade effectively. That's pretty much all you can do from this point. There is no secret answer. Just be like, haha, here I am back in this game. No, this is going to be a long drawn out battle for Reno if he wants to win this. And, uh,. I mean, it starts right now with every single fight, jumping on these BCs right away. Marriage is the right thing, teleports one and two back. And that's kind of the, the battle cruise attacks, right? Two Corruptors or one Corruptor in this case going down. That's something that right now he just has to keep replacing those Corruptors. Right, yeah. You can't let the battle cruisers just go around, run around like they want. I mean, Raynor is going into the macro mode up to 80 plus drones, all of the upgrades. He had already dedicated to the two attack upgrades from early on. And he is expanding. Like, he is going to have a stable late game, especially if Maru is not, like, super eager to attack. He's getting maxed out, but his 2 2 is only halfway done. Um, but it does mean that he has to deal with a, a late game Terran who knows what he's doing and can have that killer instinct. He can push. Not necessarily because the timing dictates it, but because he knows he has an advantage. I guess this is the time to remind people that 2000 Atmospheres actually does have a rich Vespian geyser base, yeah. which Rainer is uh, taking pretty quickly. I mean, if he was in a better position, one where he had more momentum, he might even try and aggressively take the other, but it's not really his prerogative. Maru is starting to do some kind of... I mean, the, the first double attack I really liked, but the more that he does kind of attack without every unit in position altogether, the more Raynor has a chance to take efficient trades, but uh, this was a bit of a distraction. However, this base is going to be saved this time. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't think a Cyclone Lock no, is going to no, get no. it. Oh, no. Oh, oh my god. Oh, my god. Uh, Balin's going to show up last moment, and only five drones go down. I mean, that was a clutch defense if you've ever seen one. That was a lot of drones. That would have been so expensive, because Raynor does not have a bank yet. He's uh, He's been forced to... You know, engage actually quite uh, frequently against the mech players, so he's not really had a time to get to 90 drones and then just feed off of that for a uh, you know solid five six minutes. Maru, who's been uninterrupted mostly in his economy, is now adding a ton of command centers and orbitals, going up to all the gases and continuing to make actually a very large cyclone army. Yeah, he wants to play this kind of you know more tradey kind of style of Terran mech, right? Where you go out, you fight, you take a bit of a trade here, a bit of a trade there, and you're the player actually with a lot of workers that you can actually rebuild off of these fights again and again, while hopefully denying some of that Zerg economy by locking onto these hatcheries. Don't think that's going to work out, and with the Viper here, these tanks won't have much either. He does actually get the hatchery just about, but it costs him a ton of units. Yeah, it does. I mean, the hatchery kill is, is fantastic because it's really not a lot of hatcheries that Raynor is is mining off of here, but Raynor is taking some very efficient trades. Spatter cruisers go, I guess, you know, uncontested, but yeah, as far as army to army, Raynor is maybe not the most upset with how things have gone. Even his upgrades finishing now as he cleans up the left side attack again. 
mean, part of the reason some of these multi-pronged attacks are doing damage is that Rainer has also never had time to build a bunch of static defense. Um, but if he can get some breathing time, he will be able to. Maru is just in a still pretty good position. He can definitely just continue churning out units at a very fast rate. But he also doesn't have a bank. And eventually, they will start to fight over some common bases. He does Atmosphere is one of our larger maps, though, so it's still going to be a bit split map for a time. That could be what Rainer does next. If he cleans this up, he could actually attack Maru's base, which might yep. be a bit more concerning. The Cyclones could get trapped in the bottom right. They're getting as many lock-ons as possible before that happens. There we go. A couple of bailings from the south side really helping out. Corruptor is even going ahead and peeing on that building. Might get the kill. These Cyclones being cleaned up, trying to buy some time for the tanks to get sieged. But I guess Rainer's going to get one base and then maybe could do something on the right as well. Yeah, Maru is not trading well these last few fights. They've been oh. really quite expensive for him. Um, overall, resource loss is decent, and Maru has a game be mining more, right, with the work account advantage. As the based off side stays alive, and now we're going to go through with these couple of BCs and just try and be aggressive elsewhere, take the Corruptor's attention away. And once more, Maru is instantly like, oh, you're going down there? I'm going to go this way. He really does just want to stay so aggressive with these armies. Yeah, Rainer, had he known that, could have maybe taken out the right side base with some plant area yet, but... Didn't know that, and now is forced to respond to the tanks that are already sieged on that high ground. So it's going to make it very, very difficult to do. Plenty of Ravagers, but only one Viper in the mix. I'm actually a little surprised by that. Rainer does have some gas bank. Yeah, I kind of wonder if it's just because he felt like he didn't need many Vipers because there wasn't a lot of tanks in previous pushes. And now it's like, oh, wow, suddenly all of these tanks are here, and my army's actually not really that great for fighting into that. So... Maybe kind of part of the way that Maru is playing this. Recancels the bottom side. Great job by these BCs. Canceling that again and again is always great. Does have to teleport out though. Corruptors at least forcing that as Reynor is going to make a move for the right side base as Maru is going to keep pushing for the left. We're going to start base trading this out a little bit. Those BCs going to be in a bit of trouble here. So all those SCVs, they're going to blow up right away. Let's see what the rest of the units from Maru can do. This base will fall, but so will another base of Reynor on the other side. Probably, and Maru is going to have to slowly push to the left side while also being pushed in here, but I think the tank line is good enough in depth. Rain is going to back away from that, but yeah, this this left side attack, is, it's kind of slow because these aren't a bunch yeah. of cyclones, they're tanks, so there's a possibility that Rainer takes one base and still keeps his. The honest truth is that he just needs all the bases we're currently talking about, so he needs to keep this alive. He needs more minerals as the trades have him going that well, and he, uh, yeah, he's definitely still losing the game. Yeah, no, he, he really is. I did think Maru would be a bit more aggressive on this left side, and in the end, he is going to get go. this base. So at the end of the day, it is for base for base. In the top right, these Corruptors are going on a bit of a hunt, moving through the bases, seeing if they can find anything else. But there are really turrets everywhere. BCs are dead, by the way, so they are done, but it doesn't really matter. I feel like Rainer is again going to be like, like Blackburn, like, oh, I mean, he's probably just going to do a typical push. Well, first, though. Oh, good, good stuff for Rainer. Thinking, I mean, he's, he's he's absolutely correct this time around. It is a two racks. This is really going to help defend. Maru won't be able to just get a quick and easy four two. The first Marine's about halfway done, so a little bit of a heads up. Of course, it is nice because he's cool first thing, so you can say, how many lings do I build here? Well, plenty. Uh, well, of course, you always want to, you know, thread the needle here as a Zerg player, not to over defend or under defend. But yeah, you could pull the drones immediately. Stop the bunker as uh, much as you can, and then, well, instead of only drones, hey, there's also some lings. Rainer looking to shut this down hard. They're pulling even more drones with the lings. And Maru, I mean, he's just going to have to try and, and keep Rainer producing defenses to call this any type of victory. Mm -hmm. But as far as actually getting all the damage done, that just shouldn't be what happens. A drone drill comes in, tries to go for the surround, does barely get it. Nope, not quite. Two of them slip out, but then eventually do fall. And that is that for the rush. Rainer yeah. losing obviously a lot of mining time, but now just doesn't have to worry about the two racks or any form of aggression for quite some time. Oh, smart thinking. Maybe. You know, one thing that will definitely come out of this, of course, yes, Maru has a delayed natural, but at least Rainer also has a delayed third, and Marines and a Hellion on the map right now. This was a no link speed defense, right? So you actually have a pretty good amount of control on the map, and he's actually going to swing around, try and take accounts on the third base, is that going to be possible? There's still only six lings on the map. Three queens? I mean, these marines don't kill this super quickly, but the queen's super out of position. I think you're canceling the third base here. I think so. I think it's just low enough. 
Yeah, the Lings are going to nah, force you to nah. commit. He's going to go back for it, though. Oh, okay, now he's going to commit. Okay, yeah, no, no. Raynor <laughs> says he's not allowed to take it. Wow. Nicely oh, done okay. by Raynor, because he said, I believe you're going to back away, so I'm not going to cancel, because I feel like a lot of people there probably would have just said, right, cancel. It was close. It was very close. Now, Morrow sees that a Baneliness is on the way. His Aubrey is clearly faster. He might still try and do the Hellbat push and hope that the Banelings won't be ready in time. Do you think he'd be right about that? I mean, it's actually going to be a Hellbat push with the Marines in the bed. In fact, another Overlord gets caught here. Maru could do some serious damage. But Raynor is building up the Queen count. He's got more Lings on the way. In fact, his Queens are already well positioned. They don't have as much room to kite back, I guess. But it's not like Hellbats go after this hatchery, no matter how low health it is. Perfect timing on the speed as these Lings hit the natural. No wall whatsoever, so lots of economic damage on Maru's side, but he's also now attacking with these Hellbats, fighting the Queens. A little caught off guard. They are migrating back, though, especially with the help of the acceleration zone. Looking a lot better than usual. Here come the Lings to try and help out as well. They could actually be building Bailings right, but he's yeah. not doing that. He's just thinking that maybe the Queens can cut it. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe the Queens can get uh... it done. As... We do continue to fight on through. Obviously, no medevac anymore, no healing. So eventually, these units will start to go down. The counterattack from Reno was perfect, though. 10 SCVs really just offset so much of the damage taken here. If those 10 SCVs aren't dead, I feel a lot better for Maru. With those 10 SCVs dead, Maru is looking pretty dead. It's so funny, too. He's look at the units lost and the resources lost. It's that it's almost even. Yeah. He's hip of a medevac that went down. Step back, don't really do anything, and just hope. Right, it seems like a silly thing to kind of put your game, you know, the game on, but there really isn't much else you can do. Reno goes into the Spire, just going to take control of the game with Link Bay Muta, make sure it's going to be difficult for Maru to expand. And I don't mind that, I think really is just a good way of taking a control on, on the map, which you should have a lead on anyway, right? And very possible that one of the first fights here can just become overwhelming even for Reno and just kind of win everything for now. I mean, I think Rainer is maybe having some flashbacks yesterday and being like, yeah, you know what? I will try and kill this guy. <laughs> it's, yeah. It might take a little while, but it worked out eventually. So let's just uh, let's make sure that I actually kill him whenever I do push out. Mara is hoping for a bit of a flub, a bit of some Yudas running over missile turrets. Wouldn't mind you have whatever, maybe uh, moving into a plant area that doesn't quite die to the Banelings. But as Rainer is getting closer to maxing out, Maru is struggling to get up to even a past 100. <laughs> so that's yeah. a good side. Yeah, it's been real slow as now the Banshees show up. But of course, you know, the later these Banshees are doing this damage, the worse it is, right? Like, oh yeah, it's nice to kill four drones, but killing four drones when he's on 70 workers versus killing four drones when he was on 50. There's a big difference there. And so even these Banshees are like, yes, finally some damage. And it's like, well, yeah, like three, four minutes too late. Yes. Now there's Muta, so it's now there's even, <laughs> even sadder for them. <laughs> yep, one Banshee not really going to do a whole lot. Maru now gets to set up his defense against Muta's and eventual Ling Baneling just swarms. I think that would be a good plan. I will say that if Mart Rainer does misjudge partially an attack, that that is where a small map is maybe good for Maru because the counterattack will be a lot swifter. Or at least the creep cleanup, I guess. Panchi perfectly out of that support positioning. Uh, Rainer even trying to take some of the forward bases, as it is a small map. We do want to get as many as possible before Morrow has a chance to even top those up. And there is the hive. You think Rainer's going to go into a greater spire again? Rude Lords try and kill him? Um, I mean, it's a possibility. Why not? If you kind of got the money, get a greater spire going. Yeah. I get mean. everything. May as well just get a bit of everything right, then you can just adapt to the situation. If brutes look good, kill brutes. If they don't, maybe just get a couple of ultras, help with the head button effect. Yeah. Like there's there's really like very few wrong moves here in terms of like tacking up and what you build into. I mean, the only wrong moves you're gonna see is if Reno really commits to a fight that just goes horribly, horribly wrong. So, well, he's just gonna go through for this right now. He sees how much is in the natural, and the swarm is gonna come quite literally swarming on through on this base, and that's just gonna be well, 14, 17 SCVs, a few of them got picked up by a medevac to minimize the effects of that attack. Raynor's supply doesn't move. Remaxed instantly. And Maru is, well, going to wait for 2-2 and play off of a 35 worker deficit, an <laughs> army deficit. That was just a good time to attack, right? No 2-2 upgrades. 2-2 was there for Raynor. Units were a bit out of position. He could get into that initial choke easily. 
Yeah, he's actually being pretty, almost more cautious than usual with choosing his attacks, more meticulous about when he wants to fight. But that ain't a bad thing. I mean, it's it's actually an improvement, I'd say, over his usual kind of like, oh yeah, I'm just going to throw units at him. Yeah, more perfect initial fights, hopefully the easier the ladder fights get too. So this one should be pretty yeah. easy. Six of supply difference as Raynor once again maxes out on Ling, Baneling, and Muta, and just crashes into everything. The Banelings don't care what they hit. There's too many of them anyways. And Raynor will tie up the series, gets past the Beckett block. What do we go into? What is the answer for him? Why are we double gassing it? It's All a fusion right. call once again. Maybe we really are just going to go to mech. Maybe he really believes that's the way. Here comes the battle cruiser. It is going to go for the forward attack. The queens are a little bit more together, but no yeah. support crawler to support. The Bailings help out a little bit. Lings are here as well. It seems like perhaps, yeah, the Hellions will actually be cleaned up. And by the looks of things, the battle cruiser will be pushed away as well. I'm so. I'm kind of surprised though, because there's only two queens, right? Another yeah. one or two shows up. If he hadn't backed it off so much, he might have just had one more queen kill already. This is now really bad because that battle cruise is going down, zombie grub. Eight workers killed, but to lose the BC when you're going to build multiple as well, that is so, so costly. And that ain't worth eight drones, not along with no. all the Hellions that you lost there too. That's a really, really good defense for Raynor. Whether he goes for an attack or actually plays this out to the later stages is going to be in a more comfortable position. Maru is going to have a little bit more of a tough time controlling the game like he's done in the past, but it's uh, certainly not impossible. Yeah, absolutely. Going to see this VC going to drop his Yamato on a queen and try to get a couple of drones, which it will be able to do. You know, to pick up a bit of damage here then at least as we head on out of there. And we just wait for all of these upgrades to come on through on both sides, really, right? Mech upgrades, you know, melee, missiles, flyer attack upgrades. I mean, this is really a situation where Raynor can drone the heck up. He's going to be on 96 drones here soon. We're in a position where Mario's like, right, I feel like I can probably get to a fourth base. I'm going to go for some later game mech. But um, Raynor is going to get to late game. His hive is on the way. Spine crawlers this time as well to help against the harassment, which was missing in the 2000s game because he just didn't have a huge economy to start off with. It's just a much more comfortable position. That's basically what we're seeing. It's comfortable. You can afford the luxuries of spines, and that just makes the rest of the game more luxurious as well, right? Safety or a better start leads to a better mid, leads to a better late game. Who would have thought it? Marriage just says, yeah, late game, right? CC's on the way, extra factories. Now going to go Macfield, so does want to sprinkle in some Cyclones, which I don't mind because you do want a few, right? You do want to have a squad probably trying to slow down some of the bases of Raynor. They are basically going to be your harassment force, some way of dealing damage, of denying bases, so I don't mind it. But yeah, initially this really was all about those tanks, so just a very different way of setting up initially. The uh, trouble there for some mech is that it's just like it feels like once it's already past a certain point, it's really hard to get any surprises. Yeah. Uh, as the creep just starts getting out of control. He's done a decent job cleaning up with just plain old Hellions, but that is what's a little concerning. Mar also not quite seeing this army until the center tower saw it. It's forced to bring a lot of army back home. Those tanks are actually in some decent positions, kind of protected by the supply depots, but Maru does need more units over here. There it is. There's the tanks. He'll, he'll defend this and actually even chase some of these units down. A lot of ravages left over. Maybe the Hellions want to actually chase this. And they indeed do. Even the battle is coming along. Where are the corruptors? The damn bottom side. So actually, Reno had a good prediction mm. of like, oh, it'll be siege on the bottom side of the map. They're about to hit my base. But Maru did pull them all the way back. So actually, that base was safe. But they've been, the corruptors weren't at the top side. But Maru never really got the BCs into that fight anyway. That's true. Rainer's trying to take the top right. He's also been pushing top right. But Maru is going to maybe be happy taking the bottom left. Eventually, he can maybe take these bases too, where the Hellions are. That is another attack. <laughs> yeah. Rainer's a uh, bit one-minded on his direction here, but it is going to find tanks on siege. Jamaro a little out of position, but like actually there's even more tanks here. More army here as well, responding a lot quicker, but Rainer's still going to go for it, actually. He's going to move through a lot of tank fire, a lot of Hellions. He's gotten rid of those, however, and only a couple of tanks left over. Maybe actually finding a crack in the defenses is going to take down a lot more tanks. Really deny the third base this time. 15 SCVs went down, and Raynor is even going to fill up with a lot more Lings and a lot more Corruptors because he does see that there's four Battle Cruisers about to hit his base. 
Yeah, I mean, that's great. ADNC means it's expensive. Reno actually needs to get some lava on the map. He was kind of lava stuff, and that's why he's not built more already. Yamatoing for the base. I mean, he's got one Yamato left. He starts to teleport out of here. He will get that hatchery, Maru, as that one last BC goes down. He is desperate to stop some of this mine of Reno. The problem is Reno is setting up the right side at the same time, so he has other bases to work with. I mean, Rainer is using a very expensive composition, but as far as resources trade go, it's really not that bad. And he is mining a, a little bit more, and he's, I mean, he's also got the potential to hit a left side eventually. Maru is not going to be sieging tanks there, thinking, okay, it's all about the right side, all about the right side. There's a little more flexibility in the way that Rainer can go bop, beep, bop, and forth. Beep, bop. Yeah. yeah. It's um, kind of, I guess, watching Rainer continue to headbutt with Ling, Bane, Ling, Ravager, just really not going into that high technology. Again, only one Viper. No, like, all Ultras, obviously, not going to bother trying to make Broodlords work here. Just the lair-based composition and hoping to find Maru under defend him. This time, it's almost all of the tanks that are sieged. Yeah. Quite a depth of them as well. And that, yeah, that's definitely not going to work. I mean, Raynal is just being a little bit too one-dimensional here. Yeah. And Maru obviously just says there's no attacks on the left side. And it kind of makes sense because Raynal's defending the right side as well. So he doesn't really want to send his units to the left side because he's afraid he'll take damage on the right side. But that means it's very obvious where the attack's going to come from. So Maru has everything in position. Now these BCs oh, go on a mission. And the Hellions are going to fight a full mineral line. Time to split those drones like crazy. I mean, eight, nine workers. Hellions, they're like that. Slowing down that economy of Raynal. One thing that, you know, Maru has had all this time is just that left side, right? No attacks there, so that base is just constantly mining. At this point, Maru is winning uh, economically. Like, yeah. And he can maybe even take the bottom left corner. Or as maybe things focus on Maru's push now, maybe Maru could even take that uh, north base. He takes down one more hatchery. This feels like it never really has been mining in the first place. Then it's going to be totally fine with that and just back away Possibly, yeah. like, wondering, okay, where's the army? And actually, it was responding. It's just very late to the party. Yeah, I mean, you're, what, you're down one base here as Maru, but you're kind of winning out by 5,000 resources lost. Don't think that's uh -oh. too bad. This is really bad. Maru, why were you here? I mean, now the Viper abducts go off. None of these tanks will even begin to siege because they know they're just in trouble. Somehow, I feel like less dice here than I thought it would, but obviously, the attack's not done yet. Now, a couple of tanks do get the chance to siege. I, I thought that was going to be way worse. <laughs> yeah, you see all the tanks on Siege. I just like, that doesn't look so hot. But uh, yeah, Morrow actually had enough time to get back. He actually still has a ton of Cyclone Hellions. That's actually where a lot of his supply was. And I think he just, he, I, I feel like he just thought Rainer was somewhere up to the top right and was hoping, he was like, wait a second, maybe I can get another base? BC's Not quite top the right, case. By the way. They're going to start doing some damage. You know this trade's happening, but the BCs have real just freedom up there. Corruptor showing up now, but that's four drones. Been a lot of mining time. BCs, you have teleports? You do. We're even going to go for the cheeky Yamatos. Before we teleport out, just getting any bit of value possible, adding to that resource lost advantage. Yeah. And Maru did eventually get that base once again with the help of the Cyclones. So lots of base denying. None of them truly comfortable on like three or four mining bases as the first three bases start to get mined out here. 17 minutes in of game seven of the Grand Finals. And it still feels like it's pretty even. Both of them have a bank. Maybe even, you know, less convincing of a bank for a Zerg player as I look at it. But let's see if the fight scenes start going better now that more spellcasters are involved. An abduct here on a battle cruiser doesn't result in anything as the corruptors were a little busy elsewhere. But Raider is actually gonna push into the mech army and again find too much to continue going forward. So it's forced to back away, and we'll have to, I guess, accept the command center as a sacrifice, and that's yeah. not bad. Feels like a bit of deja vu, right? We've yes. seen this before. You back away and you're like, oh cool, this CC as I leave. Um, at the same time, Maru is just like, no, you don't get it, right? No, you're not allowed to expand here. I've told you once, I've told you twice. <laughs> Please learn. This isn't going to be your base for a while. Denies that once again. I feel like Maru is just very comfortable. I would like to see Maru take the bottom left corner. I mean, I think that's a CC floating there now. And only because Reno just still hasn't done a lot of attacking down there. Looks like he's trying to run Lings down there now. And that's going to be an interesting fight. The Cyclones here are going to get the top right hand base. Cyclones somehow get into a little bit of a choke point. A couple help has to back them up, but yeah, again, well, okay. Somehow a lot of those Cyclones survive. Yeah, and this is going to protect the bottom left at the same time. No cancel there. That's a full-on kill, and, you know, minerals are important for Rain on a game like this, so that's a little bit expensive. 
I mean, not only have this base is down in the bottom left not been able to mine, but it's also been very little creep spread, so no advance notice, and then also it just kind of screams mm -hmm. that Maru has control. So yes, he does eventually expand to that corner base. It's going to give him a planetary to fall back to should he need it. Raynor is setting up for an attack. He's got quite a concave. I don't see any of the Vipers, however, and the Corruptors are only now coming in. They are going to force the uh, teleport, though. Battlecruiser's not going to be involved. Yamaru is going to be pushed back into the original command center, meaning that his bottom left base might be forfeit. Rainer, though, apparently not done, is going to continue forward. There are planetaries every which way we look that should stop the momentum, but Rainer even going to dedicate a lot of bailings on top of it, gets the command center, gets 18 SDVs, and does grab a couple of last few tanks there. It was at a pretty big sacrifice of his own army. A lot of Ravagers yes. died, and he doesn't actually have as comfortable of a bank as Zerg players would want in this situation. Do you worry a little bit that Mario is now still just building Cyclones? He has got seven tanks on the map, but they need to be in the right position. Otherwise, this becomes a problem very quickly. Corruptors are trying to make a move, and these BCs are going to say, well, we've got to be a little careful here. Teleport's on cooldown. He's got SCVs pulling to repair, but one goes down already. Now only seven Corruptors left in the game. That doesn't mean that Maru's got more space for other units. Now we're going to be able to get rid of this bottom left-hand base. It still is low-tech units from Reynold, but all of a sudden it feels like Maru doesn't have the ground control anymore, and Henty can't deny that bottom left base, which he's denied multiple times. Viper's showing up for some kills with these abducts, and Maru is really trailing in supplies, EG. Yeah, maybe that was enough, especially as Reynold still has enough pocket change to actually rematch at least once. He's not going to be able to do it again, but maybe he has found the win here. He's up 70 supply. He's going to be forced away. The battle cruisers come in. The corruptors are out of position. But Raynor, with all of this aggression, has not just denied Maru's very important bottom left base, but also has finally been comfortable on his top right base is mining. Yeah, being able to pick up the base in the top right with no more further issues, being able to pick up the bottom center. And now Reynor has control of the economy like he's never really felt in this game. Maru was so good at relentlessly denying base after base, making sure it was a struggle for Reynor to have economy. That's no longer a thing, and neither is Maru's, you know, beautiful defense at home. It's scrappy. It's not really much of anything. Three tanks left in this game. It's basically Cyclones kind for their lives. Yeah, which they're going to eventually just run out of <laughs> position yeah. to do. Eventually you do back into a corner, and there's not much more that Cyclones can do there. Or if they try to leave and the Vipers abduct, they're ready for it. Rainer's ready to win the game. He's got a 30 army supply lead. The Spellcasters come in hot with a blinding cloud. Bailing's rolling in, threatening the Cyclones' lives. That orbital not going to be at all any help is going to at least lift. But that means that the Hellions take some damage. The command center on the left is going to go down, or perhaps not actually. A mass repair does end up saving it, giving Maru another chance as he also finally gets back to harassing the top right base. Plenty of drones are going to go down, but is that going to be enough? Maru is broke. He has absolutely nothing right now. Yes, these BCs finally found the damage, but he's scanning the central base he denied so many times. And while scanning that, he'll be like, no, no, no. You've got too much money. You've got too many units. And this looks like it's going to be a big, big problem. The Vipers and the Corruptors show up. BCs are going down, Zombie Corrupt. And I just don't think Maru has anything left in the tank. He can see it on his face. He's kind of accepting defeat as there is a mass of Zerglings running through his face. And I feel like we might have ourselves a season of finals champion. I think we do. Rainer should be feeling very confident. He sees so few units. Lings are actually doing some pretty damn good damage. Maru's trying to kind of sneak bases to the bottom left, but now his production might actually be camped. If he can't defend this natural trope, he's not going to be able to do it. Rainer is going to get the 4-3 victory in these grand finals, and he is pumped about it.